I'm joined today by Pat Hancock, managing broker and owner of Thomas Lynn Realty Group in Central Florida. Pat, how are you today? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing awesome. Let's get right to it. Pat, okay. you've been a real estate broker for many years now. What does it take to get started? Yeah, it's been, I think, uh, I first got into the real estate business uh, 2004. So what's that? About 18 years now. Got my broker's license a couple years after that. Um, but, you know, you start off with, there's a whole bunch of schools. You got to get your initial sales uh, license before you start down the path of becoming a broker. And uh, so you go out, search for a school. There's a bunch of schools that offer what's called a 63-hour uh, pre-licensing course. So it's 63 hours. Uh, there's different ways you can take that. Uh, you could take it actually being there at the school in class. You could take it uh, online nowadays. Back then, I don't think the online option was there. Um, I chose to take it in, in in the classroom and get it over with. I think it was 10 days in a row, and they were long days. So they were from 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning till I think like 5 or 5.30 in the afternoon with a few breaks in there. But they were long days, and somebody like me that's not good sitting in a chair for a long time, you know, it, it, you know those, those afternoons, they were a little bit tough. Uh, some people opted, I think there were schedules where you could take it on like a Monday and a Wednesday or, you know, basically spread it out. But I always like to kind of get it over with. So um, you go to that school. Uh, I, I used a school, always used a school in Central Florida called IFREC. Um, and uh, for all my pre-licensing broker stuff, post-licensing, I always use that school. And, you know, you go get your first 63 hours done. And there's a test at the end of that those 63 hours that's given to you administered by that school those are usually pretty easy those tests are pretty easy um, the pass rate is very high i wouldn't tell anybody to ever stress out about that test um, now once you pass that and get through that initial 63 hours take that class test pass that then you go on and take the state test now the state test is a different story Last time I checked, I or I heard, I think the pass rate was like 70%. Okay. Um, or maybe even a little lower. I think you got to get a 70% on or higher on the test. That's what it is. But I think the pass rate was maybe 50, something low. You you would, your, your jaw would drop because it's pretty hard, um, I thought. You know, some people, of course, go in there and, you know, breeze through it. But I thought it was pretty tough. Um, and I actually took it, I think, a couple times before I passed it. So, um and I'm not, you know, let me add, I'm not a great test taker anyway. So if you're a good test taker, I wouldn't stress about it. So you pass that state test and you go and you uh, get your license. And now you're a sales associate. And then you can you can choose to become a realtor or not. To become a realtor, you have to join the board, the National Associations of Realtor, um, Realtors. And um, you join your local board, uh, which in Central Florida is Aura. Um, and there's an annual fee for that. You pay for MLS dues, you paid your board dues. I think it totals around a thousand dollars a year. So it's not, you know, as far as, op you know, that falls into the operating expenses or whatnot, business expenses, it's not a lot. Um, but, um, but that's, that's that first step on your path to becoming a broker is you got to become a sales associate first. Okay. Is there any period of time that you have to be a sales associate before you can transition to become a broker? Yes. Back when I did it, you had to be a sales associate for one year, 12 months. Then you could start the testing and the application uh, to become a broker. Um, now they've increased that to two years. So you have to be a sales associate for 24 months before you can then start down the path of getting your broker's license. So it's not something you can just step into from day one, needless to say. No. And they finally realize, you know, even now I see, you know, uh, a lot of people have the brokers, you know, that, 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 you know, I, I would even like to see it even more than two years or a, a certain number of uh, transactions you have to have um, basically a little bit more experience before they allow you to become, you know, uh, get your broker's license because there's a lot more responsibility that comes with your broker's license. So that, so that's a great segue into the next question. As a broker, what, what's a day in the life look like for you? Yeah, um, it's it kind of a lot of it depends on what what you want to do, what kind of brokerage you want to operate. So when I first got my broker's license, I wanted to have be the next, you know, Keller Williams or Remax or Caldwell Banker and have 
300 agents under me, you know, with multiple brick and mortar offices and, you know, go that route. So, but I, you know, I realized I also needed a point of difference, you know, because there's so many brokerages. And back when I started, the phrase for a brokerage like me that wasn't a main franchise, they call this boutique brokerages, right? And, and basically what that meant was you were just, you know, you just weren't a Remax, a major franchise. So it was tough competing. So, you know, I had to come up with a point of difference. You know, how was I going to be different, you know, to, to, to recruit agents? And, you know, um, so a day in a life back then for me was, you know, I had, you know, I, I think I got up to about 20, 22 agents. Uh, I had three offices. Um, you know, there's smaller offices because that was part of the model we were going for. You know, we were looking for more experienced agents that had been around a while um, and, and not so much a virtual kind of model, but we were kind of a, a, a hybrid. You know, we still wanted that brick and mortar where we could come in and meet and, you know, the face to face. And this is sure. this was pre Zoom, you know, that's right. The um, world's changed a little bit uh, it, it, it since has. the early it 2000s. Has. Right. Yeah, it has. It has. So, you know, so back then, my typical day was really a lot of managing, you know, the offices and the the uh, a lot of operations type stuff, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, planning, a lot of, you know, dealing with agents, um, you know, because as a broker, anything that goes wrong with your agents, it comes back to you. So it's the broker that carries the error errors and admissions insurance and not the not the agent so if the agents for example get sued or whatnot it's the actual broker that has the responsibility to take care of that so that, that's a great point and a really important distinction between just being a realtor and choosing to become a broker it's like like being an individual contributor which has one set of responsibilities versus being a manager, which is an entirely different deal. So I, I think you know, based on that, it's probably not for everyone, or at least people should consider whether that is a responsibility they really want to take on. Yeah. yeah you know, if, if you're going to go down that path and start hiring agents and have offices, you know, when you're a sales associate, you are running your own business, but you know, you, you can kind of limit the amount of how much you run your business, I don't know if that makes sense. But when you're a broker now and you've got all the, you know, you've got the overhead, you've got the responsibility, you know, maybe you're hiring office managers, admin people. Now it's now it's really a business, you know, and you know, you know, the more irons in the fire and things you got going on, the more responsibility, the more things that can keep you up at night. Well, I think it may change the the job from what someone initially started off uh, uh, wanting to do and actually doing as a realtor, and suddenly you you find yourself spending your day in an, an entirely different way. So, with that being the case, what are some traits you think make a good real estate broker for someone who wants to pursue it? Yeah, I think you're still, you know, you're when you're a sales associate, you're you're strictly in the business of sales you know, but you run your own business. So technically you're supposed to be pretty good at, you know, unless you're going to hire somebody, uh, you know, a bookkeeper or things like that. But, you know, uh, when you're a broker, you know, you're, you're a business owner, you know, you're, you wear, and, and a lot of brokers, even myself too, I don't do it as much now as I used to. Um, but you're still in the sales business. You know, I still work with buyers and sellers, you know, you have that option too. You know, and, you know, so you still got to be good at sales. You know, you've got to, you know, I, I've learned that, uh, you know, one of my favorite books, I got it sitting on my desk right here is called Who Not How. And, you know, we, we've actually talked about that quite a bit in the last several months, you know, is, is you know, if you want to take that next step and that next level um, in any business, you know, you, you realize you got to hire a good team. You got to have a good team. You got to hire good people. Um and, you know, in, in whatever capacity, you know, we talk a lot about free, freelance model versus, you know, hiring them as W, you know, import whatever. But, um, you know, if you're going to go that route, you got to be a good manager. You got to be, uh, you know, uh, someone who can manage people, lead a team. So you have to have leadership skills or, you know, be a good leader. Right. Um, you know, so like, you so like be, every business, it really comes down to people. Right. Yeah, I mean, 100%. That's so yep. what so what advice would you give uh, for someone who's considering whether to take that step? Was there anything in particular that that you would recommend? 
Yeah, you know, the first thing that always comes to mind is is and it's one it's been one of probably my greatest challenge over 18 years in this business, whether I was a sales associate and even now more so as a broker because I have a lot more responsibilities. You know, um, you know, I've got my 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 hands in other other areas of of the real estate world. Is you know maintaining a a, a a a constant schedule and being in control of your schedule throughout the day. You know, there's there's this perception that real estate agents or brokers or people in the real estate business have what everybody calls a flexible schedule, right? Right. And everybody in the business, or a lot of people in the business, they kind of buy into that, and it's not a good thing. It's it's very dangerous. Because what happens is if you if you think you have a flexible schedule or your spouse does or your kids do or whatever, you're going to be bouncing around all day from Publix to the dry cleaners to, you know, and you're not going to really be as productive as you and success as successful as you could be. So, you know, start off with what I call your, your own version of a miracle morning, you know, try to try to block off time block, um, you know, really, really try to be in control of a schedule no matter how tempting it is, you know, to run to Lowe's on your way to your next business or, you know, to leave the office and go run errands. So you don't have to do them on Saturday. Sure. You know, so great, great advice. And, and, and the takeaway from that is be prepared to work a lot and don't think that uh, flexibility means freedom. Is that a fair way to put it? Yes, absolutely. Well put. Awesome. Well, Pat, thank you so much for your insight today and the real talk you gave. It's not all roses. But any regrets or would you do it do it the same way again? No, no. You know, you always you always look back and uh may, you maybe would have done something different here, but I'm a firm believer in mistakes you make make you better. It's the best way to learn. And uh it's been a blast. And uh, I just turned 50 this year, so I'm looking forward to at least another 18 more in the business. Perfect. All right, we'll check back with you soon then. Pat Hancock, real estate broker, Thomason Realty in Central Florida. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you, Pete.